In 2016, a discovery was made around the closest star to the Sun, Proxima Centauri. An exoplanet likely only slightly bigger than Earth on an 11-day orbit around the star was found, putting it right in the middle of Proxima Centauri's habitable zone. When this planet, Proxima b, was confirmed, people began to speculate about its habitability. Did the closest stellar system to our own host a habitable planet? Well, at face value, it seems possible. Its minimum mass is about 20% larger than Earth, which is similar enough. And it's in the habitable zone of Proxima Centauri, so could have temperatures right for water. But the similarities to Earth end there. The typical argument against Proxima b's habitability have to do with its host star. Proxima Centauri is smaller than our Sun, meaning to be habitable, planets have to orbit closer in. Proxima b takes just 11 days to orbit Proxima Centauri, which is shorter than the amount of time it takes for the Moon to orbit Earth or Callisto to orbit Jupiter. This small distance from the star likely makes Proxima b tidally locked, just like the other major moons of the solar system are to their planets, with one side of Proxima b permanently facing Proxima Centauri, and the other side locked in permanent night. This already causes issues for the habitability of the planet, mainly because, depending on heat circulation and atmosphere, the day side could be scorched into an uninhabitable desert and the night side a frozen wasteland. To make things worse, Proxima Centauri is a flare star, which emits stellar flares far more powerful than the sun's, which could destroy the atmospheres of the planets, leaving Proxima b and its smaller neighbor, Proxima d, airless. In fact, a model of red dwarf flares and interactions with their planets show that Proxima b might lose its atmosphere entirely, as well as an ocean's worth of water, if it has any, in just 100 million years. With Proxima Centauri being about 5 billion years old, the planets would have had more than enough time to become airless. If that wasn't bad enough, observations from a younger red dwarf system, AU Microscopii, suggest that stellar flares can cause all the water in the inner system to be blasted away before it can become part of a planet. If this happens around other red dwarfs, then Proxima b will be drier than any planet in our solar system. But there's a problem even worse than that. Even if Proxima b has an atmosphere, and oceans, and a magnetic field power enough to stop flares, and the atmosphere composition need to keep the planet warm enough, and volcanic activity, a second planet in the system, Proxima c, could be Proxima b's downfall. Proxima c is about seven times the mass of Earth, and so likely plays a large role in the Proxima Centauri system. Proxima Centauri is thought to host several asteroid belts between Proxima b and c, and if one exists between 0.5 and 0.3 astronomical units, about half the distance Earth is from the Sun, gravitational interactions with Proxima c would cause the asteroids in that belt to sterilize Proxima b with large impacts, likely blasting off all of its water in the planet's history. This asteroid belt might not exist, but there is evidence that it does, and that might doom Proxima b to being more uninhabitable than it already is. Clearly, the chances of Proxima b being an Earth-like, habitable planet are slim. It's seeming more likely that Proxima b will be an airless, radiation-blasted wasteland, with no air, no water, and no resources for life to cling to. This environment would be even more hostile than the Moon and Mars are. But are things hopeless? Is Proxima b doomed to be a planet that makes Mars look like a paradise by comparison? Maybe not. For one thing, more recent evidence shows that red dwarf stars like Proxima Centauri emit their strongest stellar flares at their north and south poles, not at the equator where planets orbit. This could spare Proxima b and its neighbors from the worst of the flares, allowing them to keep some sort of thin atmosphere. Volcanic activity and a strong magnetic field on Proxima b, both of which it might have because of its larger mass, could further help to retain air. And while Proxima Centauri's flares could have stripped away all the water in Earth's oceans, it's possible that Proxima b started life with more water than Earth, though that's unlikely considering how active red dwarfs are in their early days. But AU Microscopia is just one data point, and Proxima Centauri could have been much calmer when it was younger. But Proxima b being habitable relies on a lot of assumptions and luck, which, at least in my opinion, don't seem likely to actually happen. With everything going against it, I'm on the side of Proxima b being uninhabitable, but in the end, we won't know what it's really like for a long time. Because Proxima b doesn't transit its star from our perspective, it's much more difficult to figure out what its atmosphere, if it has one, is made of, unlike other red dwarf planets like TRAPPIST-1, which can be studied by James Webb to detect their atmospheres. The next generation of telescopes might be able to directly image Proxima b to try to see what's in its atmosphere, but until then, all we have are guesses and theories. Thank you for watching.